Hello everybody, this is John Buck. I'm back with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. In this video, I'm going to have another approach to the idea of proving time invariance. I know from, from past semesters, proving time invariance, proving linearity, are processes that st students struggle with, and I get it. It's hard, and it takes some practice to get to do these things carefully step by step. Uh, but I'm going to do this video showing a, n a different approach to thinking about it uh, that people have found helpful in other semesters uh, when we've talked about it this way. Uh, and it's really underneath, it comes down to the same math, but because it has more figures involved, some people find it easier to think about. So the basic idea with time invariance is it says if, if a system is time invariant, it says you can switch the order of the system and a delay box and always get the same thing for every input and every delay. So let's sketch that. So if we have our system that takes some input x of n and has an output y of n, and then we take that output y of n and delay it by m, m as in Mary samples, uh, we'll call that output z of n. And if the system is time invariant, it says we'll get the same output if we do this or if we do uh, the boxes in the other order. So for the second figure, I'm going to take that same input x of n delay it first by m samples to get some new input f of n, and then put that through the system. And the key idea is if the system is time invariant, then z of n will equal g of n for every cho choice of x of n and m. So for a time invariant system, for every possible input I choose x of n, and every possible delay m I choose, these two outputs would be the same. So it's sort of like a commutative property for delay in the system, if that holds, the system is time invariant. If it only holds for some inputs or some delays, then it's not time invariant. So it's always helpful to see an example. So let me move on and do an, an example we've seen before, and maybe that will, will uh, help make this idea more realistic, and we'll see how we work through it. So for example, we're going to do a system uh, here. Y, y of n is equal to x of n times cosine of pi over 4n pi over 4 times n. So I'm taking my input signal and multiplying it by a cosine for each value of n. And this system is actually called a module. And we'll see later this semester this has special properties that we use in a lot of systems, or particularly what this will, systems of this form do is help us shift signals in frequency. But don't worry about where that comes from yet. For now, it's just a convenient example. So again, the question is, if we put the modulator followed by a delay, will we get a different answer than if we have a delay first, then a modulator? So let's draw out our pictures here. So to start, I've drawn the, the, the first branch where I have modulator followed by delay, and I've spaced it out expecting to write some things in. And maybe to emphasize that we're using the same inputs, I'm not going to write x of n again. I'm just going to sort of tap off the same x of n and start with the delay and then the modulator. And so now my, when I do this, the, uh, the, I'll call the output of the delay box f of n and the output of the, the new output of the modulator g of n. And our key question here is the same as, as in the handout I made. Are these two outputs the same? That is, do I get the same output whether I modulate first and then delay or delay then modulate? And the only way we can answer that question mathematically is we have to sort of solve this almost like a logic puzzle, working backwards from z and g for each one of them to get it in terms of x of n. So let's see how that works out. Let's start with the top branch. We'd say, well, if I sort of work backwards here, if z of n is y of n delayed by m samples, right? I could write this as saying, well, z of n will be y of n minus m, right? We already saw in class that that's a delay by m samples. Then you say, well, I know what my original y of n was, right? y of n follows, this is my modulator system, so I can take 
This is my relationship between the input x of n and the output y of n. Right, so when I do that, I could say I know this is x of n cosine pi over 4n. And now to make this work out, I'm going to come down here and say, actually, maybe I, I should write out everything I just had. So I'll start with z of n. So z of n is y of n minus m. And now I'm going to plug that n minus m into this equation up here. Right, so I'm replacing all the n's in the equation by n minus m. Okay, so now that I've done that, I look and I say, okay, now I have an equation where I've written z in terms of things that are just the original input x. I can stop here because this is something I'll be able to compare against. And now I need to go do the same thing on the other branch. So if I look at the other branch, again, working my way backwards, I'd say, well, first of all, I have this, this modulator box works the same. It says the output, although the output is now g of n, it's still the input times cosine pi over 4n. Right? A system is really just a relationship between input and output. And by default, we usually use x for input and y for output. But it doesn't have to go that way. We can call the input f and the output g. We could call the input octopus and the output lobster. And, and it would still work. It's just a box that takes a, an input signal, does something to it to give us an output signal. So if I do that here, right, we say, well, if my output here, then if my input is f of n, my output will be the input times the same cosine. I make myself a little more room here. Right, so g of n is f of n times cosine of pi over 4n. And I'm going to bring this down below too, put this down, down here so where I can compare them more easily. So now we look and say, well, can we decide yet? Is z the same as g? And we can't decide yet because we don't have this, this term back in terms of x's to compare it with. But with one more step, we can do that. The next step is to recognize, well, if x of n is the input to a delay system and f was the output, now, I'm going to clean this little blue line out of the way here. So now we now we say, well, I know, just now I have a little more room to write, I can say f of n in terms of x. Right? I took x of n as my input, delayed it by m, so f of n is equal to x of n minus m. And so now I can use that to say I can substitute this in here for this f of n. Right? So when I put that in for f of n, this equation becomes x of n minus m times cosine pi over 4 times n, right? Because I just replaced f by this equation here. So pause the video for a minute and think, are z and g the same? Okay, now that you're back, if we look at them, we'd say, well, it starts out good that they both have the same thing here, but we end up going down in flames because this is not the same as that, right? If we look at this, maybe I shouldn't X those out. But if I draw your attention here, the Z has a delay inside the cosine that the G doesn't have. So because these are not equal, that tells us that this the result of this means the system... The modulator system is not time invariant. So you can use the same approach for any system to do time invariance. You can also use this same approach of switching the order for scaling and for linearity. It's just instead of using a delay box that you're switching the order with, for scaling, you have the... Let me go back to the previous page for this. If I want to do the, the proof for, for scaling here, I would replace this delay box by scale by scale amplitude by A and the same thing here. So the scaling property says I get the same result whether I take the system and then scale the output or take the input, scale it, and put it through the system. And the same type of idea follows for, for additivity where it says I get the same result if I take this two inputs, put them through the system, then add them, or do the adding first and then the system. So you can use this same picture approach to prove it if it helps you follow your way through the proofs this is really the same idea underlying the worksheet i handed out 
or the idea that the, the z of n is always going to be y of n minus m, right? Whatever's going on between the system, I'm going to take the output and delay it here. And so I'm saying, and that this input f of n is always going to be x of n minus m. So right, the way the worksheet says, if you know, if when the input is x of n minus m, is the output the same as y of n minus m? It really has underneath that this picture, but I realize a lot of students found it easier if we drew this picture out and explained where those steps on the worksheet come from. So I'm going to uh, post this and hope it, seeing it with the pictures will help you get a better idea of how to go through the, the proof and the idea that you're, you're going to go through something where you say I've got the same input. I'm going to look at these two different outputs, two, uh, write out expressions for the output for each order, and then try to work my way back to see if they're the same and if they are the system's time invariant. If they're not the same, as we saw here with the modulator, then it's not time invariant. Okay, so that's all for this time. I'll see you in the next video.